Well, Royal Editor Russell Myers and broadcaster Janelle Aldred join me now. Um, I've only seen the, the first one and not all of it, obviously. Mm. Um, it's beautifully done, it's beautifully shot, as you would imagine, all of that. Um, mainly about how they met, an awful lot about his mum. Very much so. I mean, we've just been sort of trying to rush through the, the first three. Sure. Even though we've just had an hour, but beautifully shot. I mean, it's an incredible uh, documentary so well. by Netflix. Very, very heavily weighed on the sort of Diana Lick. Of course, as you heard Harry say there, I am my mother's son. And I think that that is going to be uh, woven through the tapestry of this whole documentary series because the references have been made uh, way before this not from Netflix documentary um, about the, the references to how his mother was treated and how how yes. Megan was treated and how he feared it would all end up. So I think mm. it's, um, it's patently obvious where, where this is going, really. Do you feel, Janelle, this tells the story the way it is? You know, they often talk about, and I do have a problem with, we've said, you know, about telling your truth, because for me, the truth is the truth. Um, but do you think that they're going to come out of this well from think, what you've seen already? I think they may come out of it with more understanding. Right. And I actually think that's what they want. And the thing about someone saying my truth, I kind of like it because it makes it subjective because there's three sides to every story, yours, mine, and what actually happened. That's very And we true. all look at it from our own point of view. Yeah. And I think what they are seeking or what it seems they're seeking is just that chance to say, everyone else tells our story. And, and we know from the hundreds of thousands of articles, so many people tell mm. their story, what they did, what they said, how everyone is feeling. And actually, as she says, well, why not hear the story from us? If someone was saying all of these things about me, I know I would be out there defending yeah. myself. And I think this is what they're doing. The access is astonishing. I mean, we've got images there that you've never seen, especially of the children. Um, there's one in particular where they've got their little boy and he's looking at a picture of Diana and they're saying, that's your granny and they're talking. I mean, we've never seen things like that before. That's a terribly intimate thing to do. But if you want to be known, you have to be vulnerable. And I think that's probably the one of the issues with the royal family is they're actually not known. And we know them through sources and through stories. But actually, if you want to tell your side of the story at some point, you have to open yourself up and say, OK, well, this is me and, and put yourself out there and, and see whether or not people agree or, sure. or believe or, or, or believe it. One of the saddest things about all of this is the fact that, you know, the, the accusations of racism within the royal family and the, and the racist abuse that she absolutely did suffer. We've seen that online. It's appalling. Social media, I mean, it was, it was horrendous and indeed some parts of the press as well. And it's just so blinking sad, isn't it? Because, you know, we saw how much she brought to the royal family before it all went horribly wrong. Um, and I just wish they could somehow find a path for, her, for both of them still to be there. What do, what do you, what's your take on it? What do you think? You know, I'm sitting here as a black woman course, and, you know, course. understanding very much how... Sometimes it's something you can't name, you can't put your finger on. Right. Even as a woman, sometimes you'll be, they'll be like, well, how do you know that man's sexist? You're like, I, I can't tell you exactly what it is, but there's something about the way he speaks to me and the way he speaks okay. to someone else that I, I know that it's the woman thing that's an issue. And I think with race, there's that thing. Mm -hmm. And I think for a long time in this country, it's been that intangible thing. But Meghan entering the upper echelons of the establishment made it tangible. It brought yeah. it right up to the surface. And I think it is really sad because you would expect from the 1950s a couple to have to turn away from their family or feel they have to exit mm. that situation to be together. And so I think in 2022, 2020, 2019, to think that they felt they, that race was such a big issue. I know, because that, that, that baffled me, you see, because I don't, I don't, I mean, I, I suppose you're different because you, you know, you don't know how everybody else is feeling. But that was one thing that I thought was an absolute positive. And we talked about this, mm. do you remember, Russell, how brilliant this was? It was, it was fantastic. I mean, it was it, a great I, I, I thing. I think they would agree that there was an overwhelming um, sense of wedding. positivity we were, with the we were wedding. And, it was and, great. and unfortunately, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's demonstrated in those appalling articles that there were sections of the media that uh, were inherently wrong with their commentary and, uh, no, and the were, way that but... that then spurred yeah. a whole social media Maybe I'm being very of, of naive, racism. but, I, you know, I would like to think that the vast majority of people in Britain absolutely welcomed over the open arms and but I, wouldn't feel like that. But when there's poison, it's like the one bad apple. When there's poison, it spreads. And, yeah. and I think the unfortunate thing is we have to be realistic. We're not living in a post-racial society. Mm. And I think that with what happened with her just, it was just so shocking, I think, to some people who would just never have imagined, including me, that there would be a black woman or a woman of mixed race heritage yeah. in the royal family. So when it happened, there are half of us who were thinking, fantastic. Yeah. And there are loads of people who were like, 
this should absolutely not happen, as evidenced by the credible death threats. And I think, as a, I would love us to, to, to learn something from this. Mm -hmm. And I don't think everything should have to be a teachable moment, but I would love us to really yeah. understand what race is like in this country. Well, on, the, on that point, I think it's a, it's a great point because there needs to be some introspection, one would argue, from, from the palace. And um, yeah. Harry says it himself, that he was going to the palace and saying, something needs to be done here. And essentially it was like, well, so-and-so went through this, my wife went through this. And I think that that's almost a dig at William because it shows uh, Kate being hounded by uh, press photographers at the time. Mm. Um, so, th I mean, this, this, is the, the, this is the moment where there needs to be some reflection. It's very interesting because we hear from um, from Megan's mum. Look at that mm. that photograph there. That's a remarkable picture. We've talked about that mm. before. And um, he does talk about a lot about press intrusion and how difficult that was, especially when he was little. Things did change though, didn't they? Well, the, the issue that he, he really brings to the fore is that how his mother had to deal with it and they did as children. And he, yeah. and he says that there was no one moment where he thought, well, my family is different. Right. And yet he had grown up in this goldfish bowl. And I think that he, he, he gets across quite well, actually, that he really didn't want that for his wife and his children. See, this is what I'm, we've said this before. I think he always wanted out. Oh, absolutely. I think course. he was absolutely, yeah, absolutely. desperately she, unhappy she in that situation. You can actually see it when, when they look at pictures of him as a wee boy. He looks very bewildered. Mm. And whereas William looks quite comfortable, actually, um, he doesn't. And I always think he, he probably just wanted out and... I think you get that flavour from, you know, he talked about him growing up and then there was those stories about his drug taking or him drinking, mm. him going out with different girls. And he says, you know, some of those were true, but he said that it was the rehashing of articles and the sort of fever, right. feverishness of... Does he um, address at all? Because obviously I've only seen the one. Does he address at all that infamous he does, um, Halloween actually. party? He does, And I think that was. a lot of people will applaud him for this because I know that he apologised for wearing the Nazi uniform mm -hmm. at the time that everybody will remember, uh, you know, an appalling error of judgement. But he does actually say, um, you know, it was, a, it was the biggest regret of my life. And I yeah. think that there is an awful lot of in introspection from Harry at the moment. And we've mm -hmm. only seen, you know, sn snippets we've tried try to rustle it as much as possible. I think he's had a lot of therapy. Yes. Yeah. I yeah. think he has. And maybe sometimes, you know, that he's, he looks as if he's still in the middle of it, mm. to be fair. Well, I think this, really is a ther this is a therapy this is... of sorts. And, uh, right. and, and it seems to be working for them. I think uh, most people will, will applaud them for doing it at this stage. Just well, you wonder, them, you uh, wonder what's going on at Buckingham Palace. GMB's Richard Gaysford is there. Um, Richard, will they be watching, do we think? I don't know. I think they probably will. I'm not sure that the senior royals will be. Uh, and uh, when they started this documentary, the f opening frame said members of the royal family declined to comment on the content of this documentary. Uh, so perhaps not wanting to get involved at all from the very start of the whole process. But we do know that their aides certainly will be monitoring it, uh, looking through for inaccuracies, inconsistencies, claims that they feel that they might have to counter in what's been described by Chris Shipp this morning, ITV's Royal News Editor, in a timely manner. So uh, it's normal for the royal family not to comment on every claim that is made about them. They don't like a loop to form and to keep going around in circles. But it has been the case in recent years that they have certainly said things, especially about racism when it first came up uh, with regards to Meghan Markle. You'll remember the Queen said that uh, the memories might uh, be uh, that people would have a different uh, recollection of, of events. Uh, and Prince William, when he was asked at a public duty as to whether the royal family was racist or not, said absolutely not, we're, we're not that kind of family. So they do respond. It's just a matter of time, perhaps, as to uh, when that might be and what form it will be. Uh, the king today is actually going to be out on public engagements. He will be out in public, but no one, Lorraine, expecting him to comment on this. It's just business as usual. That's usually what they do. Thank you, Richard. Thank you so much. And that's what they'll do. They'll just carry on, won't they? Mm. Yeah, very much. I mean, I, I, don't, I think there will be a measured uh, repro mm. reproach about this. I don't think we'll see anything straight away or they'll probably like to get all their ducks in a row before. Sure. But I haven't seen anything explosive that they would comment on at the moment. So Not yet. Very much in yeah. their, uh, on their But isn't side. that almost worse? There's nothing explosive. The thing about the Oprah interview, it's easy to counter a big mm. claim and say yes. it's not true. Yes. But I think the very, the good thing about this, the soft touch of mm. this is who we are, we're human, these are our feelings. I think that's actually hard to counter. But I think the worst thing the palace could do is start briefing. 
I think that is the absolute worst thing that they could do. Yeah. I think the best yeah. thing, if they, if they want to counter it, I think they have to put a face and a name to it. Mm. Well, thank you both very much. Um, I just think it's terribly sad because they were, you know, when you think back to that wedding and how what an amazing day that was and it just felt as if endless possibilities and all of that. Let us know what you think. We're going to have lots more reaction later in the programme. Diana's former butler, Paul Burrell, is with us in just a moment.